Welcome back to Left Anchor. I'm Alexi the Greek. And I'm Ryan Cooper. And today today we've got um, a little a little segment about uh, Theodore Adorno and the sort of methods of fascist propaganda and what's what's that all about. Um, Adorno, of course, he was one of the uh, the, the founding sort of uh, figures of the Frankfurt School, a critical theory guy. He wrote uh, Negative Dialectics, um, which um, I've read some of that and found it absolutely incomprehensible. But but today we're talking about um, his his essay uh, Freudian Theory and the Pattern of Fascist Propaganda. And so this is a a, a little bit more of a concrete discussion, which I, which I think the the Frankfurt School guys uh, are. They're, they're they're a lot more useful when you're talking about particular subjects, um, and so you know it's just it's 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 all about. Uh, so this was written in 1951, and it's it's sort of attempting to apply psychoanalysis as informed by 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 Freud to the the pattern of. Um, fascist propaganda, and it's a. I think it it definitely hits a lot of of uh, a lot of it rings true. I would say about about how this this uh, type of thing is conducted. And we'll get into this, but it's also interesting how Adorno, although doing a deep dive into psychology, doesn't think that the mass movements of fascism or the fact that people get beholden by fascist leadership is a psychological issue. It's psychological in its exploration, but the analysis of what causes people to be susceptible uh, potentially to, to fascist propaganda, uh, that those causes are, are structural. And so that's an important distinction. But uh, nevertheless, it's important to understand the psychology as well. So we'll get into that. I also read from um, his introduction to the authoritarian personality, and uh, we'll probably we might bring in a few um, public seminar posts, uh, which is a great blog if you should check out by uh, a few different scholars that were in a roundtable talking about Adorno on this and uh, and Trump. So yeah, so let's, let's dive right in. What did uh, what did you find useful, or, or what was your first blush response to Adorno? Again, speaking or writing, um, as you say, decades ago, um, seems like there is this persistent, uh, personality structure that he's identifying that, that rings true. As, as we've talked about with Brad Evans, there are a lot of ways in which fascism adapts historically and contingently and is flexible and, and changes. Does, it's not just, uh, you know, uh, Jack boots, uh, on the face. Right. But nevertheless, the personality of Right, and so, so the question maybe that is being addressed is, uh, Adorno writes, quote, if a potentially fascistic individual exists, what precisely is he like? What goes to make up anti-democratic thought? What are the organizing forces within that person? If such a person exists, what have been the determinants and what the course of his development? So uh, did you find, how did you find Adorno in, in responding to these types of questions? Yeah, I think you know. First of all, he he identifies the um, you know the the characteristics of of uh, fascist propaganda well. Like like towards the beginning of the essay, he says, um, first, with the exception of some bizarre and completely negative recommendations to put aliens into concentration camps or to expatriate Zionists. Fascist propaganda material in this country is little concerned with concrete and tangible political issues. The overwhelming majority of all agitator statements are directed ad hominem. They are obviously based on psychological calculations rather than the attention to gain followers through the rational statement of rational aims. And that's the thing which I think is like that is absolutely Trumpism to a T. It's it's to say that um you know, here's um, 
you know, here's the enemy, here's the the imaginary people that you should be terrified of, and uh, and 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 just sort of trying to whip up this this sort of delusional um, uh, frenzy in the in the in the population that is, uh, you know, totally disconnected from any kind of, uh, you know, material calculation of, of what, you know, it's like, oh, I'm going to get into office and I'm going to, like, address your concerns or the things that you need. You know, you need to bump up the welfare thing or you need the healthcare system to be improved. It's It's entirely imaginary. And that, I mean, that is Fox News, basically 24 hours a day, is imaginary shit, you know, that that a handful of bedraggled refugees from Central America or some sort of existential crisis, you know, that, 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 that like 2,000 people from El Salvador or wherever are going to, 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 to like just wreck this massive country. Um, and... In that, you know, the I guess initially speaking, the articulation of the problem is very cogent. I think also as a historical matter, it's important to note that, you know, the the United States today is is a relatively prosperous uh, economically speaking. You know, like, like things are bad in a lot of ways, but unemployment is like less than. Uh, five percent, I think, five, f- four point something. Um, it's all a little hanky how they measure that, though, right? Like it's yeah. an extremely prosperous place for a lot of people, but for a lot of people, it hasn't been so prosperous for a long time. Yeah, right, right. right. But but you know, you compare that to the Great Depression times when unemployment was twenty five percent, and and or or Gre- Greece in the last twenty years or whatever. Yeah, right? yeah, and and um, I think the. The important thing to note about the the cla- classical fascist propaganda is that you know they they gained a, a ton of support. You know, Hit- Hitler was bored with policy; didn't really care that much about it. What what he was absolutely obsessed with was just this kind of thing: propaganda, public image. Um, you know, uh, just just trying to whip up the masses and. In the context of nineteen early nineteen thirties Germany, when unemployment was, I think it topped out at thirty uh, percent in uh, nineteen thirty two, um, that was pretty successful. Like the 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 fascist the Nazi Party became the biggest party in Parliament. Uh, the 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 German Reichstag or whatever I think their their peak in in July of 1932 and they had an election they got to 37 percent but that was as much as that was as good as they could do that that it had a it had a a, a, a very powerful effect but it, it it was limited you know that the like this this type of effort was it only went so far. And how Hitler got to power was that he convinced the 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 or the you know um, uh, conservative establishment he convinced them or they convinced themselves that the way that they needed to move forward was to introduce Hitler and the Nazis into the government. Um, you know he, he Hitler won that election. He had the he had the the number one. That was the biggest party in in that uh, election, but how he actually became chancellor was he was appointed by uh, Hindenburg on the advice of you know Kurt von von Schleicher and and other people, and so you know I guess it's just like and and uh, a, a kind of important sort of qualification to this or like like you. I, fascism it's all about the image it's all about trying to project this this like uh this this aura of invincible um movement forward and 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 dynamism and vigor and so on and it's a yeah. total fucking fake it's it's all about lying and advertising you know, you use right. Go it's ahead. fantasy. It's fantasy, and this is where the this you know the the Freudian psychology that Adorno uses and, and goes beyond comes in. 
Um, but I think it's first important to kind of separate out uh, a few things. So you're right that Fox News is terrible in how constant it kind of acts upon affectively the emotions, the fear, right? Fear and anger, especially, right? Outrage, the outrage machine. Yep. Um, and that is uh, definitely an emotional shaping of the people that support Trump and others, right? And other Republicans. But there's something special that Adorno highlights about the fascistic relationship and what's potentially susceptible in, say, a Fox viewer to fascism that's not just Fox or that's distinct from Fox, that is particularly in a leader like Trump, right? And that is the social bond or the bond of the followers with Trump, which as uh, Jay Bernstein starts out in his, his post that we'll, we'll link to um, with, with the, the perfect anecdote, um, you know, he writes, during the election, Trump bragged that, quote, I could stand in the middle of Fifth Avenue and shoot someone and I wouldn't lose any voters, Yep. And so Bernstein writes, in claiming this, Trump understood something about the social psychological bond between his core supporters and himself that critics have noted but largely ignored. And, and so what Adorno highlights and, and what uh, you know th- these scholars point to as well is that, as you say, there's something in the narcissistic – so first of all, going back to image that's projected, a lot of mass movements, which fascism requires um, – of a different character project an image onto a leader. And, and so whether it's Obama, Nelson Mandela, or, or leaders that are in, in no way fascistic, you might even say admirable in, in, in many ways, there is a kind of identity that you as a supporter have with that person. What, what's especially distinct for the fascistic model is that there is kind of uh, an ego identification with, with a, a particularly narcissistic leader. And, and this is something we can delve into a little bit and, and how that cements a certain, the emptiness of that narcissism and the promises and, and the, like the, the link to, to the bullshit and the lies and the narcissism is all part and parcel of this dynamic uh, that we could maybe unpack a little bit. But I think this gets pretty interesting. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, a bit later, Adorno says, you know, talking about the, the, the nature and content of fascist propaganda, he says... Quote, it is psychological because of, its, because of its irrational authoritarian aims, which cannot be attained by means of rational convictions, but only through the skillful awakening of a portion of the subject's archaic inheritance. Fascist agitation is centered in the idea of the leader. No matter whether he actually leads or is only the mandatory, I'm not sure what mandatory means, of group interests, be, because only the psychological image of the leader is apt to reanimate the idea of the all-powerful and threatening primal father. This is the ultimate root of otherwise enigmatic personalization of fascist propaganda. It's incessant plugging of names of supposedly great men instead of discussing objective causes. And this is a thing, you know, I mean, again, we, we should probably emphasize, like, Trump Trump is not an outright fascist like like he he doesn't have a a super dedicated mass movement um and he is not actually attempting to overthrow the state he is not attempting any of the sort of like quasi keynesian um economic policy by which hitler sort of bought off the the working and middle classes of germany in the 1930s uh, nevertheless, right. So let, let's let's distinguish. Just to put up another point on that, exactly. He's not part of, or it, it, he's frankly not smart enough to understand what a fascist project would look like or require. So who knows if he would be interested in doing it? But he doesn't even understand enough to to do that. Um, so he's not part of an actual power grab institutionally in that sense. Uh, he doesn't understand the policies or the type of things that would go along with it. But specifically, the fascistic propaganda, his rhetoric, his whole way of being as a as a leader and his leadership uh, plays into the kind of fascistic susceptibility in certain types of people that are under certain types of economic and social conditions. Yes. 
And that can create, and that's why we have basically the standard issue Trump, uh, I'm sorry, Republican tax cut and justices and every ad to nine Republican administration would do the same thing. Plus increasing hate crimes, right? In the name of Trump and, and these things that are new, as we talked about with Mehdi Hassan. So, so that's why there's not a political project that's being instantiated, um, in the political system and through policy, but there is this movement and things are different and right. Just out, out and about with, with people, uh, where dog whistles used to be kind of, uh, heard, but, but not expressed. Now you have violence and, and hate crimes going up. So, I think that's a good way to put it, maybe. Yeah, yeah. And, and um, you know, to I guess just to sort of complete the point there is that he is instinctively tapping into, I would say, this, this type of thing. You know, you look at Ben Garrison cartoons or how uh, how so many, like, Republicans, you know, you look on Twitter and you see so many Republican um, uh, sort of, uh, partisans have adopted uh, Vladimir Putin as this like super manly um, avatar of of you know the the type of leader that they they want someone who I would think almost certainly doesn't know anything about, like people do they know anything about Vladimir Putin you know he's just a, it's a it's entirely imaginary. And I think he knows judo and he sits on horses without his shirt. <laughs> yeah, and it, and it just like it it it's it demonstrates and I I think this, you know, the 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 I don't know much about psychoanalysis. I haven't read a lot of Freud. I think that, you know, Freud was probably incorrect in a lot of things, but almost certainly correct to say that 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 what trump is doing is instinctively tapping into these sort of like like degenerated impulses that people can develop over time and you know it, i mean like you can look at how he talks but i think you can also look at how trump the actual person deviates from trump the uh the 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 figurehead the way that uh, I mean, again, you look at Ben Garrison cartoons, Trump is portrayed as a sort of broad-shouldered, very muscular person who is always sort of doing some kind of physical violence. He's, he's like, tamping down, on, you know, like, like battling people, throwing punches, being a... A, str- a strong man, if you yes, will. Yes, a, a very... A str- strong man? Very strong man. masculine <laughs> energy in, these, in this, in the propaganda him himself he is this fat effete billionaire who has never done a day's work in his entire life he's incredibly feeble and i would imagine fairly sickly he's old you know and i mean this like you, you look at hitler there's a, there's an interesting uh, there's an interesting uh, united states intelligence report on hitler that that talked about the sim, like Hitler was not a ubermensch type of person. He was not a impotent, right? I well, I don't know about that, but 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 he was he was sort of in, narrow shouldered. He was he was uh, he was not powerful. He was not like you you know he was not Thor. He he would get his his under underpants pulled up in a wedgie at recess. Is what you're saying? Yeah, and but like you know the in this case the the divergence is is. Much, much more striking to to look at the way that Trump Trump partisans, the mega chuds, uh, portray Trump and the actual reality of this just like human custard pie, this just <laughs> absolute fucking jiggling mess of a person. And and you know it's just it's like yeah you, they they must be tapping into something. You know, nobody, no yeah. Bernie Sanders supporter would be like, yeah, Bernie's very, he can do lots of pull-ups. He's very strong. He's virile, virile. Like, no, he's, virile he's an elderly New York Jew, you know. It's like I, I could trust him to, like, shoot some some hoops, you know. <laughs> he's a baby, baby-making baby machine. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, so, okay, the fantasy. Let's get into some of this psychoanalysis because it's 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 kind of interesting. Yeah. So you have... Right. Okay. You have 
uh, this propensity to project onto the leader, right? Your own ego. But the key is, this is pretty interesting. The, the leader is both kind of above average, just kind of close enough to, to you, the supporter, but also like a Superman figure. It's, it's like both. It's both like, yeah. you know, uh, the, the wish fulfillment, it says, uh, of, of, uh, of the person and their fantasy, but also the person has to be relatable, <laughs> right? So, uh, and this, the idea is, and this is uh, Bernstein writing here, is that uh, – there's a relationship between the narcissism of the leader and the idealization, right? So the, the leader has an idealization of himself and God, if that isn't Trump in a nutshell, I'm the best. I'm the, I'm the most humble. I'm uh, <laughs> right. Uh, whether it's the, the size of his hands or whatever it is. Okay. So, so the, the leader's idealization of himself is promoted to the followers in making the leader their ideal. Each follower is allowed to love himself or herself, right? To get rid, quote, this quotes Adorno, to get rid of the stains of frustration and discontent, which mar his picture of his own empirical self. Um, and so further to allow the narcissistic identification, the leader has himself to appear unabashedly and unapologetically narcissistic, a performance of preening self-love. The leader, quote Adorno, the leader himself need love no one else. He may be of a masterly nature, absolutely narcissistic, but self-confident and independent. And this is the really interesting part about Adorno's argument. He says, for the leader to be loved, he must not love himself. He, he must not himself love, right? So it's all about Trump and his own um, idealization of himself and through his just there, there's something remarkable about this because if anything trump will never admit he's done anything wrong he will never admit to being less than perfect he will always proclaim he's the best at everything yeah i, I just he always says most very telling how trump he always says if he's ever criticized or he or he or he ever like some topic of expertise comes up he's always like the best at everything or he i know more i know more than the generals about war yeah or you know it, it's not just, I'm not anti-Semitic. I'm the least anti-Semitic person who has ever lived. Uh, that's right. I'm the least sexist person ever. Yeah. But, I mean, and without without any irony, I'm the most humble, right? Like a performative yeah. contradiction. <laughs> um, it's just, you know. Uh, but So, so this is, this is uh, interestingly fitting in. Again, this was written very, very long ago, this, this Adorno, right? But the idea that if you have a leader who's so fully narcissistic... That you then, anyone can project onto that person, right, and identify in a way that you feel loved. If you identify with that leader, you feel <clears throat> almost a perfect love that can't be challenged and taken away from you because they are expressing that love that you want for yourself that you're not getting. <clears throat> yeah. Right? And, and, and so you can see why it doesn't matter if he doesn't deliver on policies or promises because it's not about that. And in fact – we can get into now this negative conception, right? Uh, so it's this is a substitution for actual love, which is why it actually ultimately has to be expressed in kind of the hatred or the dynamic of these outgroups, um, which keep changing, as uh, as was pointed out in in, in, um, in Bernstein's post, uh, whether it's Mexicans, whether it's Muslims, whether it's drain the swamp, right? It, it could be Comey. In fact, he could have a new enemy every day. And it doesn't matter to supporters who the enemy is, as long as there's an enemy. This allegedly, or uh, so argues, would argue Adorno, is because this negative relationship is kind of a replacement for actual um, love, right? Isn't that interesting? Yeah, yeah, and you know, maybe to to bring in some history again, you know, I think this is why fascist ideology it it, it tends to take root in in places where um uh that like society is not functioning properly. You know, I I remember taking a um there is a uh a motorcycle trip out to West Virginia and that um one of one of the things I remember is is on one of those uh, remote highways there, someone had taken a piece of masonite siding and sprayed uh, j just 
leaned it up against a tree. This was in 2016 and sprayed Trump on it uh, in blaze orange um, hunting, you know, uh, uh, color. And the, the and Trump skin orange. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and, it, you know, so as we were talking about with Mehdi Hassan, this is not to say that that like. That there's some sort of mechanical characteristic of of people, you know, being despairing or whatever, and and sort of p- turning to, to 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 Trump, you know, in that sort of fashion. But that this type of reasoning tends to take root in communities um, where uh, things are kind of hopeless. Where they're like the economy has sort of passed them by, um, where there is not uh, a lot of opportunity, where there's a lot of opioid overdoses. I mean, you know, you look at mm-hmm. West Virginia is the the nation's capital of opioid overdoses. Seven hundred and eighty million pills. I was just reading today uh, over a six year period stuffed into West Virginia for the profit of the fucking Purdue Pharma and the Sackler family. Um, and, and, um, it's, it's a, it's a complex process, but when the, when the society is not, uh, it, it's not, it, it is manifestly failing these, these, these communities. It's, it be, it becomes, I, I think very, uh, it, they become vulnerable to this, this type of hateful ideology and you know, I mean, it's it's just it's frankly it's just not a coincidence that this that Hitler's electoral high tide came in 1932 when unemployment was was 32 uh, percent, um, because it just when 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 uh, when 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 society is breaking down when it's just not working at all this this type of thing, to say like oh the 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 daddy the daddy is going to come just trust in me. I will I will I will fix all the problems which by the way are the fault of these disgusting outgroups these the Jews the Mexicans the the you know the 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 outsiders they're taking your jobs they're 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 taking your money and that you know that that type of rhetoric becomes much more plausible and it finds much more fertile ground when you let this type of shit fester um, Who's your daddy? Trump's your daddy. Uh, did you did you see did you see that Adorno wrote that? Look, it doesn't have to be the Jews. The Mexicans and the Greeks can be the targets of the same type of stereotypes that justify the same type. And oh my God, how prescient the Mexicans and the Jews today. Yeah, that's I'm right. I'm sorry, the Mexicans, the Mexicans, the Jews, the Mexicans and the Greeks and the Jews, all three groups, right, have been um, just squeezed politically and blamed and shamed and punished, right, for the sins of others. Um, that was pretty prescient. So yeah. it's not about which group. It's not about the group at all. That's another Could point. Could be anybody. It's about yes, yeah. It has nothing to do with the intrinsic characteristics of any of these groups. Um, and as you say, so so this is. I think people get. I don't know. I I mean, I get why people get hung up on this because it's inflammatory and there's a lot of touchy issues, and it can be easily reductionistically uh, discussed, and and so we try not to do that. But like. When we say that there's a reason that the height of unemployment in the Weimar Republic was when right uh, Hitler rose to power, and when we say that that Trump uh, doesn't necessarily capture the poorest of the poor in this country, but when he rose, there are all these domestic problems with those not well off in terms of social mobility uh, and the wages of whiteness, of course. There is a relationship to the economic power, economic crises, and as you say, the opioid crisis is another social breakdown, right? These things are interconnected so that the social, the economic, and the psychological are inextricable in a way. So like the, the psycho- psychological, it's not like a endemic nature of any particular person or group, but as uh, Bernstein says, quote, I, I understand Adorno uh, to claim that psychology is what happens when ethics fails, when practical life can no longer be supported and sustained through shared norms, ideals, and the forms of attachment that attend them. 
Then the underlying mechanisms of psycho- psychological life take over, appearing nakedly, so to speak. And, and so this is when you see mass shootings, when you see any number of things that, of course, in our modern, uh, liberal, individualistic, atomistic conception of reality, oh, that person's psychology and trauma is to blame, right? We don't think about the conditions that gave rise to that kind of psychology being at play. Or, in this case, the susceptibility of someone who is um, in West Virginia or or wherever and has been failed in fundamental ways of human, human flourishing. And they don't have to be the poorest of the poor to not flourish as human beings, right? Like, it's kind of ridiculous to say that only the poorest of the poor uh, are miserable in, in today's capitalistic society. That's just nonsense, right? So, you know, the idea that these structural problems, political and economic, uh, kind of intertwine with social psychological problems is nuanced, but also kind of obvious, right? Yeah. A- and to say, right, so, so I think then to say that the answer isn't like they should go to therapy, right? The, the answer is to remove the cause and then change the structural conditions. But it's important to understand the psych- psychological consequences or susceptibility that can be produced by both the conditions and the important part that mixes with them, the kind of leadership that takes advantage. And here's the key. The elites who take advantage of not just the conditions, but the psychological susceptibility and act upon those things, right, to kind of light the match and and then build their own power base, right? Yeah. No, um, um, there's, a, there's a good quote in here um, from Adorno. He says... Uh, The narcissistic gain provided by fascist propaganda is obvious. It suggests continuously and sometimes in rather devious ways that the follower, simply through belonging to the in-group, is better, higher and purer than those who are excluded. At the same time, any kind of critique or self-awareness is resented as a narcissistic loss and elicits rage. It accounts for the violent reaction of all fascists against what they deem uh, zersent, uh, which which uh, that which debunks their own stubbornly maintained values, and it also explains the hostility of prejudiced persons against any kind of introspection. Concomitantly, the concentration of hostility upon the outgroup does away with intolerance in in one's own group to which one's relation would otherwise be highly ambivalent. So there's a there's a a, a key aspect there, which it you know. You, you look at the Republican coalition, which is, uh, you know, this sort of lumpen proletariat uh, slash petty bourgeois mix of, of, of rubes, frankly, um, with, you know, absolutely merciless capitalist murderers who, who are right now trying to destroy Obamacare and take Medicaid away from their own constituents. Um, and that I think you know that points to the uh, the, the 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 current kind of uh, uh, articulation of of how the sort of Trump project is going right. So Adorno Adorno is is he's he's articulating the 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 the, the political rhetorical um, um, effects and how it can be really. Re- like this type of rhetoric can be very effective. Um, on the other hand, you know, somewhat unlike Hitler, you know, Trump has not pursued any sort of heron volk democracy type of policy to just hand out goodies to white people. He's just trying to fuck the white. Like, I don't. I don't think he actually means to do this because I don't think he understands anything about what's happening in the government. But, you know, Mick Mulvaney is in there pulling the levers to say, yeah, take away the health care, take away their, you know, Social Security benefits. Like, just just, just get rid of all of it in this sort of uh, residual um, um, uh, libertarian ideology that, that still holds. And I think that, that points to the real danger. Trump is you know consistently sitting at about 40 45% popularity if he if he were to combine what you know his rhetoric his sort of affective politics with 
actual handouts, <laughs> yes. he'd be unstoppable. So, so you're right. So, so, so what I think you, you've stumbled into something. Uh, Trump is just such a natural narcissist that he intuitively narcissistically performs all of the techniques that one would have to master to try to manipulate the masses in this way. And yep. he just does it by being himself essentially with, with no <laughs> like self-awareness of, of how it's actually a, a brilliant fascistic techno- technique. Right. No. Uh, and, and, but if somebody co-opted his brilliant fascistic propaganda and performance of cult's leadership and combined it, as you say, with actual political uh, maneuvering and, and, and policies that fit the, f- the fascist political project, um, that rhetoric could serve the type of exclusionary politics that could really be dangerous, uh, as we've mentioned before. So uh, thank God he's such a little tyrant. And this is, of course, you know, what, what Plato talks about. Um, but even Foucault talks about it, you know, in all of us, there's this, this tyrant in, in our ability to kind of rationalize our behavior and our, our power, our desire for power. Um, but as, as Plato wrote about kind of the, the inability of uh, people to, to balance their soul with, with reason and spiritedness in balance with their, their passions um, leads to tyranny within an individual. And that person can then capture or be the symptom of or, or the kind of symbol of a whole regime or community that is, is tyrannical in their spirit. And so he's definitely that. Um, but, you know, I think, I think there's uh, just as, so as, because he's tyrannical, this is where I was going with that, sorry. Because he's tyrannical in his soul, he literally, like, there's a reason that he can't have relations with other people, right? That he, he fires everyone, right? Uh, and, and, yeah. and so P- Bannon, Bannon, for example, could have been extremely dangerous had he stayed in power. He was fired. He was, right? So, so because of the, the, the tyrant's inability to form relations with others, because the flip side of, of tyranny is having a rational soul, which means you're able to reason with and deliberate with others, and therefore you can have, right, a, an ability to form relationships. And so the, the ancient Greek model was the bonds of affection through kind of a, a friendship, right? Um, uh, that allows discourse on what should be done to to form, that's the basis of a good order. And the opposite of that is a pure power play where a narcissist or a little petty tyrant uh, can't handle disagreement and, and anything other than praise and support of what those interests are. And that's Trump. He wants what he wants, and if people don't get on board, he will eventually get in a fight and ultimately do a power play on them. So thank God for that. And his sycophants aren't sycophant enough uh, to actually co-opt him in service of a more dangerous project. So we're, we're blessed, hashtag blessed in, in that respect, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. It's hard to know whether anybody could sort of take up his mantle in the way that he has, um, because he, he, he does have that sort of devil's uh, ability to, to, to the demagogue sense of what people want to hear. You know, he, 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 he is, despite his clearly advancing, you know, brain problems, uh, it, he, he does, he does know what people want to hear and, and is willing to repeat it, you know, time after time in a way that's appealing and go ahead. Right. Because it, it fits his whole life brand, which is complete infatuation with himself and with his amazingness. Uh, which, if Adorno's argument is is to be kind of taken seriously, and I think it should, is exactly what the supporters are seeking in him. Uh, which, if you think about it more specifically, right, these uh, Trump supporters that we're talking about, so not all Trump supporters, and standard caveats, a lot of Trump voters are standard Republicans, were standard Republicans, some of them don't like him anymore, what a, yada, 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 what have you. But for the fervent supporters, right, you have specifically people who hate Hillary Clinton because they feel, and this is another psychological thing, that the PC culture, right, uh, those that would call them the deplorables, are an anathema, they're anathema to the coastal latte sipping liberal elite, Right. And, and Fox News plays upon this. They feel unloved, unrecognized, unseen 
uh, in the real America, by those elites that have been in government, by Wall Street, by all those liberals, right, who resent their guns and their Bibles and everything else. And so he specifically is unabashed in breaching the norms about political correctness and saying, I'm the best and I'm speaking truth. And therefore, their psychological states are comforted by feeling, no, no, even if I really am racist and sexist, but I won't say those things to myself. I am a good person. In fact, I'm not racist. I'm the least racist. I'm the least sexist. I am a good person. I am loved. I don't need to be a liberal. I don't need to think those things about right uh, equal opportunity or whatever, right? It's, it's kind of like a refusal to accept the judgments of those that have been calling upon mainly white men to recognize the misogyny, the racism, um, and all those things that the PC culture embodies, right? Uh, because, hey, I work hard, and boy, that person surpassed me because of affirmative action, right? You can just imagine the various rants that get validated by Trump in his pure love of, him, of himself and his expression of those sentiments that they share, right? So that has to be... He's not just a person that loves himself up there. It's a person who is also someone they can identify with, with the sentiments and, and the specific out groups he's attacking are related to those things about themselves that they are trying to guard against being judged for. Yeah. It's a word for that. Like resentiment. Uh, resentiment. Yeah. Nietzsche. Yeah. 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 Right. A classic, uh, you know, the, the, the ego creates an enemy to, to insulate itself from culpability. And, and maybe this this gets into the 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 um one of the fundamental characteristics of fascism uh which is which is it's it's fucking stupid it's 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 dumb fascism is a is an idiotic way to organize a society uh and empty it's empty yeah. and shallow yeah and and fa- it's fake and and yeah. it presents this this uh this this image which is all about efficiency rationality you know what do they say about Miss mussolini it's like oh i mean at least he made the trains the run trains, on time right which is not true no it's, it's, it's not it's not right yeah yeah and, um um the uh ian Kurt, uh ian kershaw's book about hitler gets uh gets into how uh you know when hitler took power the whole uh um structure of the um German government became completely chaotic and and suffused with corruption um be, because like the the if the efficiency and the and the the uh um you know decision making processes of things were subordinated to the the uh you know the 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 political needs of the uh Nazi party and um you know he was constantly they just became all these various little power centers that were feuding with each other all the time you know there was no sort of like trying to articulate some rational goal and work towards that as a sort of government policy it was just like you know this this little fiefdom and this little fiefdom and this little fiefdom they're all competing with each other and it was just like horrendously inefficient and also, you know, in terms of policy, uh, you know, Hitler has to be one of the worst uh, uh, leaders of a, a country that could ever be imagined. You know, his he's no Ezra Klein, right? <laughs> he's no Ezra Klein. His who did we who did we who did we compare Ezra Klein to last time? I forget. I can't. I remember. think you were saying if if Ezra ran a country, this is another Ezra's dictator analogy. I don't know. Yeah, he, well, I mean, I think the Obama presidency is kind of like that, but you know, Hitler um, <laughs> you know, he 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 comes to power and uh he he's obsessed with uh the the idea that uh there's a there's a international Jewish conspiracy that is going that is uh a a a a strategic threat to the 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 German state. That's totally fucking imaginary. Never happened. And 
what we need to do about what what we need to do to secure our future as a German people is to take over the Ukraine. We need to annex bit, bits of Western Europe so that we can have living space. And this is just a fucking ridiculous. This so, is so nutty, the, like stupid. This, this brings shit. in t- another aspect of the psychological bond that's really important. So, first of all, the f- fascistic uh, cult following is not rational in the obvious sense that the project, even if it was politically um, put into place by Trump, does not actually satisfy their material needs. Um, and so, of course. It doesn't matter that he hasn't delivered on any of the things that he promised. And, and actually you have, for example, right, farmers whose subsidies are being taken away by his isolationism and like the trade war. And so, right. So you have his voters actually being harmed materially directly yeah. by his policies. OK, uh, so it's irrational in that sense. But it's also irrational in a non-rational sense, not just against your rational best interests. But Adorno talks about, um, quote, the famous spell they exercise over their followers seems largely to depend on their orality. Language itself, devoid of its rational significance, functions in a magical way. And, and so you, you, you can see that he continues on that the, the phoniness of the leaders, right, um, applies to uh, the act of identification on the part of the masses and their supposed frenzy and hysteria. This is, of course, why Trump loves rallies, right, to whip up the hysteria and frenzy. Uh, Adorno writes, the followers do not completely believe their leader. They do not really identify themselves with him, but act this identification, perform their own enthusiasm, and thus participate in the leader's performance. So whether it's the, and this is maybe controversial, whether it's the, uh, although I think you've drawn the link very well, whether it's the, the Pittsburgh synagogue shooting, Right, clearly Trump supporter, and clearly, as you say, uh, prefigured by this um, anti-Semitic rhetoric uh, and, and propaganda, or whether it's literally one in five hate crimes, right, in recent years have had Trump's name, something like that, uh, uttered or referenced in the hate crime. Um, so, so these performances of people that may be are emotionally satisfying. And and again, to replace the lacking, loving relationships that are fulfilled when social bonds are allowed. It's like what, as Aristotle would say, once mere life is secured, you can have, right, the good life. Because the good life isn't there, because you don't have actual uh, capacity for healthy, loving relationships, there is this ability to participate in a kind of apparent love, which Trump has for himself that you project onto him and identify with. And in the performance of his act, you can make your own acts of violence of, of, or just of cheering for him at a rally or of a hate crime or of yelling epithets or of wearing a shirt, right? With expletives and, and, and racist remarks. Uh, it's so performative, not just from Trump, but from the followers. And there's something about that that answers the question, why don't they care about the actual policies or their material needs? Yeah. 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 And I mean, just to, to tie off my previous point, you know, you, you, you look at, you know, Germany in 1945, um, you know, you talk about voting against your own interest. Uh, G- Germany was was absolutely devastated. Um, the The whole country was bombed to smithereens. Uh, the 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 um, Soviets occupied like a third of the country, and um, you know, it was cut in half for for fifty years. And this, you know. Th- turned out to be the, the the biggest own goal in history i suppose and i think it te- i mean maybe tends to demonstrate as you're saying it's like this 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 false uh um picture of you know i'm participating in a national community which is based on uh you know v- violent hatred and external aggression it Inevitably, you know, if taken to its logical extent, inevitably ends up turning in on itself and 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 cre- and creating, you know, um, you know, not just the sort of military defeat, but also that that um, by the later Nazi period, you know, the the sort of police 
uh, terror regime that they established was starting to turn in on the German people to be like anybody who questioned anything, anybody who suspected of, you know, not being patriotic enough and so on. Um, you know, because this, this, the, 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 the all consuming need for enemies, it just, there's there, if, if you don't have one available, it, you'll just create one internally. And it just, you know, it's, it's, it's a, a, appalling terrible way to to organize any sort of community and that's right it, it pure the purest poison yeah it, if if let's let's get a little touchy-feely here because fascism is so hateful and, and sad and empty and, and shallow right if what fascistic propaganda and the as Adorno would say libidinal or Freud would say libidinal ties that the group formation um, has towards the cult leader like a Trump uh, is predicated on this empty um, rhetoric that doesn't have any actual giving of substance to the people in terms of their material needs, in terms of their well-being, in terms of of course, in the same way that who's your daddy, right, doesn't replace actual fatherhood, right, uh, as yeah. a pretty, right, that neither does this replace actual bonds of affection that are supposed to form the basis of a flourishing polis or, or political community. And because of that, it's constantly necessary to uh, to play on on the hatred and, and the othering because it's just it's kind of like the dopamine hit that you that you would get from from uh, you know, kind of whether it's nicotine or what anything that just makes you want more and more and more, but you never quite get satisfied. You just know that you need more. Uh, the opposite of that, that shallow, empty, like you say, self-annihilating um, kind of hatred, viciousness that doesn't actually fulfill, but simply annihilates and leads to the, the violence and, and literally a will to death, as Brad Evans would say. Fascism is about a will to nothing, a will to death, uh, ultimately. Yeah. The opposite of that, a, a will to to the opposite of death, to life, to love, is the kind of affirming vision of of what, right? What would that mean? Instead of making other the enemy, of making other, right, uh, someone to sacrifice to, someone to love, someone to care for. And this love-hate relationship is kind of the friend-enemy distinction that uh, – Adorno and, and, and you know this this form of critical theory tries to replace instead of in groups out groups. Uh, let let's try to develop um, kind of a healthy dialectic where we can we can move towards a kind of growing bonds of affection uh, with more and more people in our community and and try to understand how freedom and equality really mean that everyone should be free. If freedom is to be freedom, it means also equality, right? And equality can't be equality without liberating all people as well. So there, there, there is a vision that counters the will to, to nothingness and, and the will to, to annihilation. And, and that's quite literally democracy in its truest sense, the demos, shared common good, shared collective action that we've talked about many times before, uh, where voices are heard, integrated, collaborative, and the very, very opposite of kind of the annihilative in-group, out-group, exclusionary form of, uh, of fascistic politics that seeks, seeks to exclude more and more and more groups until, just like the Nazi regime, no one's left, and even the elites take themselves out. Yeah, uh, Bernstein has a, a good quote here uh, about the sort of the, the empty fascist ideology. He says... Um, uh, even when affirmative ideals, norms, and identities fail, a practical analog of the social space of meaning and worth can be accomplished through social hatred. The worthless and dangerous outgroup becomes the negative source fueling self-affirmation. Negative integration generates an in-group without affirmative content. It takes its identity almost wholly from what it is not. From whatever differences will support its claim difference from the outgroup, when the outgroup can be depicted as a stranger, alien, threat, and danger, and thus when difference from the outgroup uh, can be sustained through hatred. And yeah, and I think as you're saying, um, the, the sort of mirror image of that 
um, where you're trying to construct um, actual solidarity and actual common interests, uh, it, it lends itself much more readily to an actual rational sort of discussion about what things should should currently, you know, what what people's needs actually are. I mean, this kind of is like the the, the that's why f- fascism is so stupid is because it's 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 nothing, you know. There there's no content there, and and right, if you're right. if if you're talking about you know you're you're building a com- a political community around shared values and 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 so on you you actually have to think about what the the uh you know the needs of yourself and the people around yes. you actually are love and requires knowledge right knowledge of what's good and knowledge of what things are and what they require that's right that's why so the perfect mirror to this is i don't know if you saw this there was an amazing uh, I assume viral video of this um, this thirty something guy that was driving. Uh, he works, I think, for a nonprofit. He was driving to uh, undocumented uh, people to uh, actually. He had taken them to court for, uh, I think, some petty um, traffic violations or something. Some some minor kind of uh, misdemeanor issue to take care of. And on the way out of the court, uh, ICE pulled them over and tried to um, issue a, a fake warrant for their arrest. And he had the knowledge because he was, tr- he was training, right? He had the knowledge to see that it wasn't a legitimate warrant, even though they straight out lied to him. They said it was, he says, no, it's not. They're like, yes, it is. And he's like, no, this is not, this is not signed by a judge. It's not a warrant under the constitution. And, and, he's, yeah. and he says, this is just, this is like a Homeland Security order. This is not, and, and they, they kept trying to lie to him, but he stood his ground and he knew that they would be violating his rights if they came into his car to arrest the undocumented people. Um, but his care was bound up more importantly with his knowledge and understanding of what to do uh, sacrificially and kind of in defense of their needs. Uh, that was love in action. That was love with knowledge. And the very opposite of the the necessarily unthinking putrid putrid hatred that annihilates that could be maybe uh, perfectly encapsulated in like a school shooting where the shooter kills random people and then himself, right? In, in a total meaningless, senseless uh, act that has no need for any type of um, knowledge and is simply annihilative. So I, I think that's a nice juxtaposition. Yeah, absolutely. And what and um, you know what? It's like. There's a great article in the Atlantic about how Trump has unleashed ICE, and it's like, what, what? You know, you're you're going to a church to like round people up. You know, you're trying to trick people into, you know, showing up to to immigration court and then putting them into, into you know, uh, vans or you're operating in literal concentration camps for children. Like, what is the point yeah. of that shit? It's just... I, well, I, w- I would say, we said before we underplayed Trump's policies as not being particularly fascistic, like his rhetoric. This is somewhere where I think, actually, that's... that's Yeah. No, he's... That's, that's... It's definitely... I mean, it's not it's not full fascism in the sense of not... Like, they don't... It, he's not doing sort of welfare chauvinism. He's not really trying to stimulate the economy... Uh, to provide a broad popular movement, he's not planning for uh, you know wars of aggression, but the elements, a lot of the elements are there, and and one of them definitely is that just the 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 the, the hate campaign against immigrants. Like Puerto Rico, there's one of, of Trump's um, flunkies on TV talking about how Puerto Rico is an, another country. And how he wants to, he cut their 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 food stamp benefits, and he doesn't want to give them any any relief money. And did did you see that the Fox headline about uh, something about Trump re- rejecting Democrats' desire to give funding to three Mexican countries? <laughs> yeah, amazing. They're all like the Mexicans. ignorance. Yeah, the ignorance is just spectacular, and it's required, but. You know, it's just uh, this exclusionary. So, so I mean, people might say, "Well, 
Obama was a, a deporter in chief. He was, and the liberals, of course, are complicit in negotiating with themselves because they think that rationally, del- in a deliberation, we can, if we do what the Republicans want us to do and simply deport a bunch of people, they'll work with us on the other things with regard to immigration policy. And of course, yeah. they didn't do that. So, so that 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 was just a, a self-inflicted, uh, unforced error and a vicious uh, form of um, exclusionary terrorist actions in, in, in the Obama administration as well. But Trump's doing that as, and he can't, the fact that he can barely top Obama is just shows how terrible Obama's regime was. But, but Trump is of course going the extra mile and separating little children from their mothers and, and, and putting, you know, putting babies in cages. And, And so it's, you know, as much in our system with checks and balances, as much as, you know, uh, you like to rip on our particular governmental structure. There are <laughs> things that keep people like Trump, uh, as dumb as he is, he would find ways to do more terrible things, if not for some of the systemic checks against it. Uh, but nonetheless, his rhetoric and very many of his policies are also um, kind of this will to nothingness and this, in this ex- increasingly exclusionary um, mode. So I, I think... There's plenty to be wary of, and the solution isn't to rationally appeal to his voting base, I guess is another point, uh, to to show them the errors of his policies and how they're materially not benefiting them. So that's, I guess, if we're going to kind of wrap up with some takeaways politically, um, not that we need to appeal to his base, but if that was considered something of import, uh, that would not be the way to do it, right? No, no, I don't think so. I mean, I, I, th- I think that, you know, y- you can't convince people who are completely captured by Fox News ideology that, that their material interests are not being served by Trump, you know, cutting Medicaid. But I think what you can do is you can sort of pull the rug up from under, uh, out from under the, uh, the, 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 um, the, the social base of how this type of thing tends to ferment, you know, um, you can, you can make it so that, you know, communities in West Virginia aren't so impoverished or stricken with, with, uh, opioid overdose epidemics. Um, you know, you, you, yeah. you can provide, you know, general prosperity. And I think that, you know, it, it it's not a rational process, but I think it does, it does kind of uh, deflate that that type of you know that type of rhetoric to say uh, that we're going to blame all of your problems on the three Mexicos or whatever you know that that the immigrants are coming to take your jobs and so on. So I think that that's you know is it, it's not a you can't def, like that's not the only thing you should do, but I think it, it is a key tool in the arsenal of fighting. Um, you know, sort of proto-fascism is to actually conduct egalitarian policy and try to cement as many p- people as possible into a, into a coalition which says, you know, uh, you know, all all the people in the country, broke ass white people in yeah. West Virginia and broke ass Latinos in in the um, uh, you know, Texas and California and broke ass Native Americans on Indian reservations and so on. All you know, you're all in this together. And that's right. to uh, to hopefully just, you know, draw out enough of that uh a coalition and undermine the sort of social base of fascist propaganda such that it just yeah. it doesn't play. We don't have to take away and so we don't need to fight the terrain on on the ground of those who are fervent trump supporters at all we don't need to pick off any trump supporters necessarily but the correlative uh movement that needs to continue to be fostered uh in the words of of bernstein here as he ends uh could be captured maybe this way so he writes adorno's influence here is that although one cannot understand the deformations of authoritarian nationalism without depth psychology, that understanding will not be crucial to combating authoritarianism. Okay, so authoritarian nationalism occurs because of the collapse of viable political alternatives. 
negative integration is the placeholder for positive integration. So, so he writes, the answer to a failed form of political life is a new and different, vital and value substantive political formation. Nothing less will do. And that's what I think AOC and many others from DSA to other leftist rather than liberal formations politically, socially, not just electorally, but locally, uh, are trying to do to create a true substantive vision, like you say, and like you described, that both in terms of meeting people's needs and letting their voices democratically shape what the needs are said to be and what the solutions should be and who needs to be held to account and what elites must be taken out or suffer in order to make that happen. That is something active and hopeful and can combat both the fascist rhetoric and the mass movement that it purports um, to wield politically. Yeah, that's uh, that's perfectly put. I think a good place to stop. Um, nice. Well, thanks for listening, folks. And um, yeah, we'll, we'll see you in the next episode. Thanks, everybody. Bye-bye. Bye. Last but not least, we have a friendly reminder that we have a Patreon. You can support the show with $5 a month and get an extra episode every week. Uh, We really appreciate the support, and it helps us keep this going.